Well, welcome back. You're still watching News Now on Plus TV Africa. The fate of Guinea's president, Alpha Conde, is unclear after an unverified video showed him in the hands of soldiers who announced that they had seized power. The commander of the elite special forces appeared on national TV claiming to have dissolved the government. Fellow countrymen, the social and economic situation of the country, the dysfunction of the republic's institutions, the instrumentalization of the justice system, the disregard of the people's rights, the disrespect of the democratic values, the constant politicization of the public administration, poverty and endemic corruption has led Guinea's Republican Army through the National Committee for Rally and Development to take responsibility towards the people of Guinea. We have decided, after taking the president who is now with us, to dissolve the current constitution and the institutions. We also decided to dissolve the government, to close the land and air borders. We call on our brothers in arms to unite in order to respond to the legitimate aspirations of the people of Guinea. We also invite everyone to stay in their bases and continue their usual activities. We will not make the same mistakes as in the past. The defense ministries, however, claiming the attempted takeover had been thwarted by the presidential guard. We have two gentlemen joining us tonight to examine the situation in Guinea. International affairs expert Paul Ejime is joining us from the United Kingdom. Hello, Mr. Ejime. Yeah, thank you. Maureen, actually, I'm, I'm in Abuja. <laughs> oh, you're back home. Welcome back. Yeah. Thank you very much. Tambali yeah. Musavuli is an activist from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Good evening, Mr. Musavali. Good evening. Thanks for having me. All right. Ejima, we'll start with you. Go ahead. What is your take on this apparent takeover of government in Guinea? Um, so it was um, uh, expected, so to say, because um, uh, uh, President uh, Conde, I think, laid this uh, foundation for himself. He brought this on himself. Uh, if you remember, he is uh, an 83-year-old man. And last year, he did everything to push through uh, a, a constitutional amendment, even when that brought um, uh, violence and death, you know, of innocent people in Mali. But he pushed through and had an election that was um, marred by violence in, in October. And so now uh, took over, um, uh, he got re-elected. So it was with about, um, uh, uh, what is it, uh, uh, almost 60% uh, or thereabout. But this, the, the, the atmosphere, the, the, the environment was already polluted because that, um, uh, you know, uh, constitutional amendment was um, unpopular. It was controversial, and it was um, uh, rejected by the opposition and many people, but he went ahead. And this is part of the problem that we have in Africa. Now everybody is blaming the military. And then, uh, for all you can say, well, they don't, the military has no business in political governance. But when politicians make, you know, make, um, uh, provide the, the environment for them to, to do this, what they are doing now. Look at Mali. Look at Chad. And then um, Niger almost just escaped. But you will also, be, um, what is it called? Uh, the, the Gambia is always uh, tilting towards all that. And this is now being seen as a regression of democracy. When democracy is supposed to be consolidated, Africa and West Africa in particular are now moving, um, moving backwards, which is, um, you know, um, really um, uh, it's sad. It's a sad day for You, you know, the spokesperson of the Special Forces mentioned disrespect of democratic rules, which is what you're talking about. He mentioned poverty and endemic corruption as reasons for the takeover. Why is Africa, or why do you think Africans um, seem to enjoy disrespecting democratic rule? Why do we have men who do not respect the time that they're supposed to be in office? Well, some will call it corruption, but um, others will also call it greed. And then wickedness, because that is what it is. When somebody has that um, the mind of amassing something to the point that what you do not need, 
Because that is what, how much the, the, you know, does any, you know, a man need, a woman, to survive? You sleep on one bed, you ride one car, you, um, I mean, what is it, how much, do, what do you eat? But these people are greedy. I think it's the greed and then the, the, the kind of um, the, the self-serving. Self, they, 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 they are not serving the people. They, are, they believe they are masters. And that is what has, by the way, Guinea is not uh, a zero poor. Guinea has a um, uh, uh, gold, it has diamond, it has a uh, bauxite, it has um, uh, 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 iron ore. But that is not uh, impacting positively on the on the you know 13 million or so of, of the of the people. Instead, the political class, in collaboration with their foreign um, you know you have um, uh, uh, mining companies, they are the ones enjoying um, uh, you know all this at the expense of the people. Okay, Mr. Yeah, well, I'll yes. come back to to that question because it is a, tr a worrisome trend, you know, on the continent. Is it something about the black man? But we'll come back to that. I need to get back to um, Kambali Mosavuli. Hello, Mr. Mosavuli. I'm coming to you now. What do you know about Latino Colonel Mamadi Domboya, who announced the takeover? Uh, Mamadi Domboya is a former French soldier uh, from, uh, from the Legionnaire uh, forces from, the, uh, from France. He returned to Guinea in 2018 as a part of, um, I guess, the regional plan, mainly a French plan for addressing terrorism in the region. Uh, as he arrived, he was given um, a battalion that he has controlled with French training and U.S. training. Actually, their troops have taken uh, training in Burkina Faso uh, with AFRICOM, the U.S. African Command, uh, right in Burkina Faso as they operated uh, different uh, tactics and actions to go after the so-called jihadists in the region. Uh, so we know that he's a very well-trained soldier. We know that his battalion has been given particular support, uh, mainly from France and the United States. And uh, what I found it actually very disturbing is how his unit has operated for the past three years now almost outside of uh, the control of the Ministry of Defense. How do you um, mean? Steve. How do you mean by that? It's a special force. It's a comm commando force, particularly uh, working with the presidency and also some of the French operation in uh, G uh, G5 Sahel, operation for France. So that's how they've been operating. Uh, the first thing that when the coup ha happened, the first question that many analysts uh, asked was, who are these soldiers? Who is behind it? Uh, we don't know yet uh, who is behind it, but what we can speculate. Uh, what, what do you speculate? Who do you speculate? We, know, we have seen in the region many coups uh, that have taken place with soldiers trained by Western powers. Uh, the coup in Mali, uh, the soldier who was there um, was trained by the United States. He was actually in the same training with uh, Mamadi uh, Nuboya. Uh, uh, in the U.S. military training, they were actually classmates together during that training. Uh, we've seen the same thing in uh, Chad, right? The soldiers who are committing the coups have received some form of military training on the outside. Is that direct uh, implication of foreign powers there? That's to be seen and direct. Yes, we can argue that Western nations are, are training soldiers who are ending up not bringing stability to co countries, but actually bring, bringing in, uh, instability. One thing that I think that we are missing uh, beyond, I think Mr. Ejime just pointed it out, uh, we can look at this coup uh, in a vacuum. Uh, he pointed out clearly that Guinea is a strategic country in the ECOWAS region. He's pointed out the wealth of the country, uh, particularly the iron, uh, the bauxite, the gold, the diamond. Just this year, there was an Israeli businessman, uh, Benny Steinmans, who was tried in Europe. Uh, for a um, shady deal in uh, Guinea, right? We know that there is a Chinese deal around the Arab and uh, an infrastructure deal that exists. So I'm not looking at this coup just from what is happening. The, yes, Guinean people are in the street. A part of the Guinean people are in the street right now celebrating uh, what has unfolded. Uh, we as Africans have to be very cautious. If there was no revolutionary process to bring change and stability into a country, we know that uh, in the end, it's not going to bring revolutionary change in the, in that specific area. So we must be careful around it. We Talking must about call out. Africans being careful, you, from your speculation, you believe that, well, the Western powers are um, 
up to something very fishy against Africa. The question is, why are Africans unable to see through this and take the Africans right steps? Are. No, Africans are. The Guinean people did. The last election, the Guinean people showed what they wanted. They voted for a leader. The result did not reflect the elections. They were imposed a leader. But what, what actually unfolded? There was a rigged election. First, there was a change of the constitution in Guinea that allowed the current president Alpha Condo to stay more than two terms. And this election was, uh, this past election was rigged. But who certified the elections? ECOWAS countries recognize that, right? So we're talking about the presidents of uh, um, Ghana, Nana Kufuado. We're talking about Watara. Like ECOWAS came out, African Union came out to recognize that. So it's kind of dubious now to hear the same institution, for example, I saw a statement that just came out from the African Union, are condemning the coup. They didn't condemn the rigged election last year. right? So we know that the Guinean people are clear about what they want. We know that they stream to the international community, to Africa, and are saying that we want a proper leadership. They were not listened to by the neocolonial agents of the West, of imperial powers, of multinationals, are the ones ruling our countries, unfortunately. Okay, a question to both of you, um, because we do not have enough time to continue with this. Um, where do you see this ending, especially with ECOWAS uh, seemingly weakened by what is going on? You know, as individual countries fight homegrown terror groups. Yes, so there are two layers to it. You know, uh, the na national, that's domestic and then the what comes out as um, you know the interference and then imposition of um, former colonial powers and imperialists those are these but you will ask after 50 years of independence why has africans where would africans now be complaining about uh, because they have taken over and then they should now do what is right. They should look at the other people from in Asia and other places and see how they govern their people, mm -hmm. but not to amass wealth and then uh, connive uh, with uh, foreigners at the expense, you know, to, to, oh, to muscle people. their own people and then create um, a, a, an environment that is so poisoned that there will be no governance. Because what you are saying now is that the typical the Guinean, just like the Malian, the, the Niger uh, uh, citizen, and across West Africa and even Africa as a whole, they have not seen what you call the dividend of democracy. And that is why they are now, what we are now seeing, and this is dangerous, that the military are now coming to, they, they will tell you they have come to uh, save the nation. But they have never done a good job. That was why, in the you know during the period that um, of uh, multi-party democracy, they were taken to the barracks. But look at what is happening now. They are coming back to show that the politicians have messed up big time. They need, like he said, ECOWAS, AU. You cannot go and be rubber stamping um, elections that have been rigged. That is the issue. You cannot. You said now you are you are condemning the coup. Why did what happened when you saw this coming? If you make a peaceful change impossible, you are causing um, a violent change. That is and a very strong place for you to just hold your thought. That is a place. I, know, uh, I think a good place for Musavuli to come in. Musavuli, how do you see this ending? With the echo well, seeming to be incapacitated, so to speak. Yeah. Yes, I mean, Corey Krumah said it best at the independence of Ghana. He said that the independence of Ghana would be meaningless if it's not tied to the total liberation of the African continent. And I'm taking that to even explain the con historical context on Guinea. Kwame Krumah, Sekuture, and Modibo Keita had a union that they created that allowed us to even think and dream of what the African Union was. They understood that we needed to work together as a nation. Their plan of a free and liberated Africa is still ongoing. Today we are talking about Guinea. Tomorrow we may talk about Congo. And after tomorrow we may talk about the situation in Niger Delta, particularly in, Niger, in Nigeria. Those issues that's happening across the African continent is continue to telling us, is telling us that the African people today are not okay with the political class. They want to say, have a say in the decision-making process. They want to have leaders uh, pretty much showing uh, the interest of the people. They want the resources of the land to benefit the people so that the gold, the diamond, the bauxite, the iron, 
benefit actually people, not the small elite. And because of that, they are rising up. In their rise, given that the small elite continue to support the imperialist, it's up to the African people to say it loud. For Guinea to be free, we need Pan-Africanism. For mm. Congo to be free, we need Pan-Africanism. And that unity of Pan-Africanism of the people is what's going to bring freedom to the Guinean people, to the Nigerian people, and to the African people at large. The unity of the Pan-African people. Thank you so much, Kambale Mutavali. Uh, he's an activist from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Thank you so much. Uh, international Affairs expert, um, Paul Ejime, also joined us uh, from Abuja. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.